Welcome, everyone. We are all here to enjoy St. Patrick's Day a little bit early. Now, I'm going to tell you a story of about how Ireland got its name. But first, now the Irish, they were very lively and happy people. They love laughter, dance and song, and just everything that they do in our hearts. They do belong. Have you ever heard the story of how Ireland got its name? I will tell you so you'll understand from whence old Ireland came. It's no wonder that we're proud of that new land across the sea. For here's the way me dear old mother, she told the tale to me. Jar, a little bit of heaven fell from out the skies one day. And they nestled in the ocean in a spot so far away. And when the angels found it, sure it looked so sweet and fair. They said, suppose we leave it, for it looks so peaceful there. So they sprinkled it with stardust just to make all those shamrocks grow. Just the only place you'll find them, no matter where you go. Then they dotted it with silver to make its lake so grand. the story of how Ireland got its name. I want to introduce you to a longtime friend, int uh, <laughs> narrator and radio announcer, and he, Roland Miller, and he is going to tell you the story of St. Patrick. The faith in the guy. You might not believe it, but the saint behind the Irish holiday is technically neither a saint nor Irish. <laughs> the St. Patrick was born in the 5th century as a citizen of Roman Britain. And at the age of 16, he was enslaved and taken to Ireland. So he was a Roman slave. He spent six years in captivity and then escaped, only to later return to bring Christianity to the people of Ireland. Not the kind of light-hearted hijinks you might think would inspire a holiday so devoted to it. Well, during his lifetime, he became a priest and founded schools, churches, and monasteries throughout the Emerald Isle before his death on March the 17th, 461 A.D. However, some are surprised to learn that the patron saint and national apostle of Ireland was never canonized by the Catholic Church. This lack of official sainthood is because there was no formal canonization process in the 400s. So calling him St. Patrick is likely to have caught on and stuck over time due to his popular acclaim. It wasn't until 1631 that the church established a feast honoring the patron saint of Ireland. And because St. Patrick's Day falls during Lent, it became a day for Christians to take time off from the abstinent demands of the weeks leading up to Easter. By the 1700s, the holiday had started to take a decidedly more festive turn than its founders had intended. It was the Irish immigrants in the United States who were largely responsible were slowly shifting St. Pat's Day from a religious observation to a secular one. Boston 
with its massive Irish population, held the first parade in 1737, with New York City following suit 25 years later. Today, along Chicago, which is famed for dyeing its river green since 1962, these cities still offer some of the biggest celebrations dedicated to the man who supposedly drove the snake out of Ireland. Well, since the Irish Rebellion of 1798, the shade of green has become associated with the holiday. Blue, which adorned the ancient Irish flag, was first identified with St. Patrick's Day. But the rebels wore green to differentiate themselves from the British who clothed themselves in red, and the color has since come to the North Ireland and the Irish to all the world. Shamrock, the national plant of Ireland, which legend says St. Pat used to explain the Holy Trinity, also became a global signifier of the European island. And while celebrating St. Pat's Day in the wildly celebratory way we know today is largely the invention of Irish Americans, Irish in the homeland have started taking to it as well in the past few decades. For example, the earliest parade in Ireland famously kicks off in Dingle just before sunup, and it is attended by town folk and tourists alike. Prepare for your ears to be musically offered by a couple of inebriated <laughs> sailors. <laughs> Probably Irish. No, wait a minute. We are not the drunken sailors. We are the self-righteous sailors that might have had a good time last night. But we're here ready to work, and we're furious about these uh, irresponsible people that aren't here to work. Okay, now I'm going to get my notes uh, organized here. Our next piece is called Irish, Irish Lullaby, but it also has another name. It's called Tora Lora Lora, which is part of the lyrics. Does anybody know what Tora Lora Lora means? There are no cries, but does anybody <laughs> know? It means goodbye, I'll be seeing you. So now we have Irish Lullaby with Adrian Christie vocal on the piano. First, we're going to get a chance to talk about my dad. This is my dad, 
Ralph Albert Cadisi. Every hair on his body had a green sparkle to it, for he was Irish through and through on St. Patty's Day. He was known as Grandpa Beer to his grandchildren, and to us, a doting, kind, humorous, music-loving dad. He was devoted to my mom and being a family man. He often bragged that Bing Crosby had five boys, but he had seven girls. <laughs> After church, every Sunday, he made our breakfast, and he would make as many pancakes as we wanted. He sang many of the songs that we will hear today, and his favorites were Harrigan. There were many, but I always remember him, H-A-R-I, and I had a hat. And if I may, I will just sing this little ditty as he sang it to us constantly. Casey wore his brand new hat to Murphy's Wake last night. Someone stole his hat and, boy, it started up a fight. Casey smashed the furniture, the radio as well. He nearly woke the corpse up as he began to yell. Oh, I had a hat when I came in and I hung it on the rack. And I'll have a hat when I go out or I'll break somebody's back. A decent man I am, I am, and I don't like to shout. I had a hat when I came in, and I'll have a hat when I go out. It's a lot longer than that, but <laughs> you, get the, you get the idea. <laughs> There's one sister is taking the picture of us on Easter, and that's my mom and dad, and they were a very loving couple, and I'm very, very happy that I grew up in their home. <laughs> So now, if I may, I'd like to sing this Irish lullaby. <laughs> Never the less when 
in trouble would press Clancy, Lord, the boom. Oh, the Clancy, oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got his Irish up, Clancy, Lord, the boom. O'Leary was a fighting man, they all knew he was tough. He strutted round the neighborhood, a shooting off his guff. He picked a fight with Clancy then and there he sealed his doom. Before you could shout, O'Leary, look up, Clancy, Lord, the boom. Oh, the Clancy, oh, the Clancy. Whenever they go, his Irish up, Clancy, Lord, the boom. Now Clancy left the barber shop with tonic on his hair. He walked into the pool room and he met O'Reilly there. O'Reilly said, for goodness sake, now do I smell perfume? Before you could stack the cue in the rack, Clancy, Lord, the boom. Oh, the Clancy, oh, the Clancy. Whenever they call his Irish up, Clancy, Lord, the boom. Now the neighbors all turned out for Kate O'Grady's wedding night. McDougal said, let's have some fun, I think I'll start a fight. He wrecked the hall and kissed the bride and pulverized the groom. Then quick as a wink, before you could think, Clancy, Lord, the boom. Oh, the Clancy, oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got his Irish up, Clancy, Lord, the boom. Next, we have a solo by Dean Lourdes, Molly Malone. In Dublin's fair city, where the girls are so pretty, I first set my eyes on sweet Molly Malone As she wheeled her wheelbarrow Through streets broad and narrow Crying cockles and mussels Alive, alive, oh Alive, alive, oh Alive, alive, oh Crying cockles and mussels Alive, alive, oh! She was a fishmonger, and sure twas no wonder, for so were her father and mother before. And they both wheeled their barrows through streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels. Alive, alive, oh! Alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. She died of a fever, and no one could save her, and that was the end of sweet Molly Malone. But her ghost wheels her barrow through streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. Next, we have the, the uh, li Royal, Royal Oaks line dancers. So I'm going to have to move some stuff off of here.
Wasn't, wasn't that great? <laughs> Let's give him another hand. I don't, I, I don't really understand why I moved this microphone back down here. I could have stood on stage just as well, but that's the way it is. Our next piece is Sandy again, <laughs> singing How Are Things in Glockamora. How are they, Sandy? I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Glockamora is? <laughs> there was going to be a prize for that. Never mind. <laughs> Our next piece will be McNamara's band, James and Nancy Akamina, and vocal by Gene Johns. Let's get this. Like McNamara's band. When the 
let you ride so big and the symbols came, the horns will blaze away. The cards be pops, they all must do, while your the lights will play. Oh, Tennessee, Tennessee, tunnels of fate, my work is something great. My friend, the world of Ireland is magnum there. Our next, our next piece will be again by Sandy Ferrara, a, a very well-known song, Oh Danny Boy. that I'm getting old or something, but I forgot to say that that is sort of the national anthem of Ireland. It is, yes. Next we have, when Irish eyes are smiling with uh, Don Gill on harmonica, 
myself on vocal and Claudia on the piano. I'll play it through one time on the harmonica without the piano, and then I'll play it with the piano, and Ken will be singing, and then we'll play it through a third time. Guess who's going to sing? Everybody. Everybody. Now you cheated that time. <laughs> I heard you sing. Okay, I want to hear everybody. Here we go. Try and drown me out. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, you did good. I heard some great harmony out there. To end our program, we have some sing-along songs. We have Claudia on the piano, and let's see, we, they should be up on the screens. So I'm going to get out of the way here so you can see it. It's 
would be you. Since I've heard your Irish after, since your Irish heart, I'm after a fate of my heart. Your glances make my heart sing. House chances come be my own. Come make your heart in my Next one, I don't know if we're going to know it or not. It's kind of um, it's a, it's really a dance number, but it's a, it's also an Irish song. If that makes sense. <laughs> Dancing, oh, the ring of a piper is too. Oh, for one of those hours of gladness, now I'm no glass like a you too soon. When the boys began to gather in the glen of a summer's night, and the carry pipers tuning made us long with wild delight. Oh, to think of it, oh, to dream of it, fills my heart with tears. Dancing, oh, the ring of a pipers too. <laughs> That's okay. Right the, the oh, oh, the days. Okay. Oh, oh, the, day, the days of the carry dancing, oh, the ring of a pipers too. Oh, for one of those hours of gladness, gone or lost, like a youth too soon. When soon. The end. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the last one, you all know this one. You don't need the lyrics, really. <laughs> but they're there. A four leaf clover that I've overlooked before. One is the sunshine, the other is rain. The third are all those roses that grow in the lane, and there is no need explaining the one of remaining to somebody I adore. I'm looking over. Over a poorly clover that I overlooked before. One leaf is sunshine, the second is the rain, the third is the roses that grow in the lane. And there is no need explaining the one remaining to somebody I adore. I'm looking over a poor leaf clover. That I overlooked before. I have one thing to say that at the end of that, there um, we were going to put in, and it's going to be if the, all those that want to stay after. There is a five-minute uh, Michael Flatley's dancers that are going to be up on the screen. And I would like to thank everyone for coming, all those that are in attendance here and those that are watching on Channel 3. Without your attendance, there would be, it wouldn't be fun. It'd be dull. <laughs> and I especially want to thank Nada Kenyon, Cannon, <laughs> Jane Higgs, for, for all of her help, and not but not but not least, Pat Powers for lining up all the line dances and getting that accomplished. <laughs> and last but not least, all those participating, because without it, there'd be no show. So may your days be many, your troubles be few, 
May God's blessings descend upon you. May peace be within you. May your hearts be strong. May you find what you are seeking wherever you roam. And in the words of Red Skelton, God bless. Thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed doing it.